right, so in the next couple of videos, I want to talk about the construction of the Groton Deke spectral sequence. And the key idea here, as I've kind of said already, is we want to build a double complex. I'll say a good double complex or bicomplex so that we get the spectral sequence. And to do that, in fact, we'll, of course, when we have a double complex, we have two spectral sequences. So the idea is to compare those two spectral sequences. Do we take horizontal differentials first or vertical differentials yet first? And uh, those are two spectral sequences converging to, in this case, it'll be cohomology of the total complex. And by comparing those, we'll get out the Groton Deke spectral sequence. But this is going to require some algebraic facts. So in this video, I'm really just going to be setting up the facts we need to get it all started. And then in the next video, we'll be able to take these and, and construct our spectral sequence. So the first one you may have seen before. It's common in a course on homological algebra. So this is called the horseshoe lemma, which I find surprisingly hard to spell, but I think I got it. Okay, so this says that if you have a short exact sequence, in any abelian category, uh, let's say with enough injectives, and the whole point of having enough injectives is that I want some injective resolution, so I'm going to have uh, an injective resolution of A and an injective resolution of C. So these are injective resolutions. Um, and, okay, really what I want to say is that there's a nice injective resolution of B, but let me set that up so that it looks horseshoe-like. So I have my short exact sequence. And then the game here is that you draw your injective resolution of A. Whoops, sorry. A little jumpy. <clears throat> and I've got a frog in my throat. Okay, and then you draw your injective resolution of C. So we call that J, J0, J1, and so on. And the whole idea is to get a nice resolution of B. Well, if I have enough injectives, there is an injective resolution of B, but I want one that plays nicely with this diagram. And so let me just copy this and draw it again. So this is such that, well, we put that injective resolution in the middle here. So I've got K0, K1. Uh, and that's an injective resolution. I guess I could have had zeros below here before that if I wanted. Um, and then uh, this is, let me say, with some maps so that, okay, so what are the maps? I want to put in some horizontal maps. And now this is starting to look like a double complex, but I'm not going to say uh, anything about it anti-commuting at the moment. What I want is that this commutes. So I can fill this in in the middle in a nice way so that I can make some commutative diagram and each row is exact. Okay, so that's a particularly nice uh, injective resolution of B. And it's called the horseshoe because we've filled in this horseshoe here. Um, and it's, it's not so hard to prove. It's just kind of a tedious uh, diagram chase and whatnot and, and figuring out what you should define these Ks to be. Uh, so let me just say, if you want more details, see Weibull. Um, <clears throat> though actually I think Weibull writes out the projective 
version of this. There's a projected version of the horseshoe lemma. So maybe look at Orlick's thesis. Okay, but with that, uh, with that horseshoe lemma, we can define an injective resolution. Well, we don't need that for this. We'll need it later, sorry. Uh, so what I wanna do next is define an injective resolution of a chain complex. And I'm doing this all like working towards cohomology kind of stuff. So I'll call it a co-chain complex, but I just mean that I'm gonna index things so that my differential goes up in degree. <clears throat> So here's my C, and how do you get an injective uh, resolution of a chain complex? Well, this is gonna end up being a double complex. Some sources will say it's not a double complex because you don't make the diagrams commute, but you can always change the signs uh, on the vertical maps so that it anti-commutes and still have the roughly the same thing. So I'm just gonna skip right to a double complex. Let's denote it I for injective. And uh, well, what's special about this, so the ith column is an injective resolution of our ith term. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, I guess I won't be able to fit it there. I'll draw it down here. <clears throat> so I have some co-chain complex. C0 maps to C1, maps to C2, and so on. I could start that with a 0. And I want to take an injective resolution at each spot. That's two zero okay so uh, those should all be injective resolutions and of course I should have this continuing on but I also want this to be a double complex so I should have horizontal maps and again my squares anti-commute okay and here the columns are exact because these are injective resolutions of each of the CI. Notice the rows are probably not exact. So I'll say not necessarily exact, but they are chain complexes. And that's coming from our definition of a double complex. Right, that when we compose successive deferentials, they compose to be zero. Um, and I guess they're co-chain complexes because of the way I'm indexing. Again, it doesn't matter. Okay, so, um, so an injective resolution of a co-chain complex is this big double complex of injectives. Um, I guess I should have said uh, that each of these I's is also injective, so it's not enough to be exact, right? This should be an injective resolution. That was an I, okay. Um, and I really what I want is a special type of injective resolution. So I need to kind of spell out what I need here. And I'll really just give you the idea, but given some coaching complex, we can talk about the uh, N cycles Right, so this is just the kernel of dn, so maybe this is d0 and d1. Okay, and so we take the kernel at the nth spot, and those are our n cycles. And then we can define our n boundaries. The indexing might be a little bit off from the usual, but I can't remember. Okay, so this is just the image of the previous map. And then, of course, the homology in degree n is just... Uh, co-cycles, I guess I should have said co-cycles, mod co-boundaries. Okay, the, the usual sort of thing. 
but the point is that that gives me a short exact sequence. So uh, because this is a chain complex, the co-boundaries are contained in the co-cycles. And so I have the short exact sequence to the quotient. Okay, so um, using these horizontal differentials, not just in C, but in this big double complex, we can get a new double complex. In fact, we can get several. So we get double complexes. I'm going to have to slide this up and then our thing's going to go off the page, but we get double complexes where we just take the co-boundaries at each place. We could take the co-cycles at each place, or we could take the homology, co-homology, I suppose, at each place, right? And so we get these other double complexes from this double complex. Okay, so what I really want is a special kind of injective resolution, and it'll be called proper. And the whole point is just that it plays well with those. So an injective resolution is, uh, well, let me say of C, is proper. Okay, what does that mean? Well, what I really want is the columns uh, in these other double complexes that we build from our injective resolution the co-boundaries, the co-cycles, and the homology, that these are injective resolutions of, well, really, those things for C. So uh, the co-boundaries of C the co-cycles of C, and the co-homology of C. Okay, so not every injective resolution is going to have this nice property. When I restrict to, say, these subcomplexes for the co-boundaries, then maybe I don't have an injective resolution. Uh, but the, the dilemma here is that you could have picked a better injective resolution, and then it would all work out. So every co-chain complex with... Uh, each of the objects in some abelian category. And of course, I'm going to need enough injectives. So I can guarantee injective resolutions. And the whole idea is that I can guarantee even better than injective resolutions, I can guarantee uh, these well-behaved injective resolutions. So this has a proper injective resolution. Okay, I'm not going to prove this lemma either, but let me at least say uh, that the proof uses the horseshoe lemma, and that's why I introduced that. And it's at least believable that that sort of does the job, because uh, what am I going to have? I'm going to have this short exact sequence, and then I want to have short exact sequences at each stage, and so on, and, and I really just want to fill in an injective resolution uh, starting with let's do it for the co-boundaries and do it for the homology and then sorry uh, cook it up for the middle in a nice way okay so um so at least it's believable that 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 kind of technique is is going to help here and again if you want to see the details um they're somewhat spelled out in weibull and they're really spelled out spelled out in X excruciating detail in Orlick's thesis. Um, so I'd, I'd encourage you to try to sort of sort through what needs to happen here to make these work yourself as an exercise. Um, but then if you get stuck, certainly refer to Orlick's thesis. It's, it's a nice source. Okay, so what are we trying to do? We're trying to construct the Grotenteek spectral sequence. And now we've got a bunch of these algebraic facts. And the, the main one that we need is this last lemma. So you hand me some chain complex, co-chain complex, 
uh, as long as I'm in a category with enough injectives, then I can actually get a proper injective resolution. And that's gonna be this big double complex where each of the columns is an injective resolution and they also play well with co-boundaries, co-cycles, and homology. Okay, so in the next video, we'll actually take that idea and, and finally construct the Grotendieck spectral sequence.